Hey guys, welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, my guest is the August Twisties Treat of the Month, which is great because Twisties actually sponsors this podcast. So always super happy to promote them. Uh, she's accomplished a lot in her first two years in the industry. She is a browser's contract star. Uh, she's been on the cover of Hustler. And of course, she was Twisties Treat of the Month. I'm telling you guys, like, this girl is going to be fucking huge, and I'm really excited that I, like, got this interview on her because, like, in a year, she's going to blow up, and she's not going to have time for me. So I'm very happy to have Angel Youngs here today. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Hello. That was the best (laughs) fucking... I don't know how to take it. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. You are welcome. But I'm I'm dead serious. Like, I really think you're going to be big, Um, and I feel like I'm right about this a lot because I've I've photographed a lot of like big stars, shot with a lot of big stars when they were new. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, first of all, your body's insane. Like Thank so you. amazing. Oh I mean, gosh. how do you walk around with a body like that all day and just not be, I don't know. I wear big sweet sweatshirts most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. so nice. Very nice. Um, and you're like, just, you're an incredible mover. When I shot you for Twisty, like just the way you like move and the way you like you danced around that motorcycle. A lot of times I have to give girls, especially because Twisty's Treat of the Month tends to be like newer talent mm-hmm. who doesn't have a ton of experience. But you were so, I didn't have to give you any direction. I mean, you wow. know how to move. You are fire on camera. Oh, that so. means a lot because I just, I keep trying to practice. You know, that's like mm-hmm. the, the purpose. Yeah, you have to practice and... <sighs> still working just, on it though yeah <laughs> I mean we're all right and especially I feel like if you're good at what you do you're probably a perfectionist so you're always trying to be better so you're never going to be like totally happy with where you're at which is what makes you good at what you do mm-hmm. you know what I mean but I definitely feel like you have that it factor so thank you wow it means a lot that really does especially coming from you oh thank you <laughs> um you just got back from Jamaica yes oh I saw God. some of your stories how was it it was I want to live there. It was beautiful. Like, the water was beautiful. Everything. The people were amazing. Man. What was your favorite part? Um, oh, man. Well, okay, so we did do this, you know, like the bioluminescent yes. microorganisms. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was, I mean, I've never experienced anything like that. That was yeah. great. Yeah, definitely crazy. And we we got our um, our hair would like go out of the water and it it looked like glitter. Like these organisms were like glitter in your fucking hair. It was, yeah. That's crazy. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I've done, I did that once in Puerto Rico. I went out to like the bioluminescent. We, yeah, we um, like got in a kayak out in the middle of the night and yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty magical. Yeah, it is. Something that you want to see before you die. No, for sure. Hell yeah, I was telling everybody about it. Was it like hard to come, were you sad to come home? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, because even today I was like, oh, shit, I got to go back to work. You know, I'm like stressed. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a transition to get back into work. But, I mean, I'll go back at yeah. some point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you were not originally from Los Angeles. No. You were from Texas. Yeah. So how are you feeling about living out here considering, like, where you grew up? Oh, I honestly don't really like it that much that's okay um, that's yeah okay. I'm I mean, not gonna be offended I get it <laughs> I mean I love LA it's beautiful there's so much to do here but I just don't inside me feel like this is my place mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah but you're young and you're out here yeah. like establishing a career um and your family's all back in Texas right mm-hmm. and you seem like you're really close to your family yeah I mean Yeah, I don't, like, talk to them every day, but, like, yeah, Yeah. we're really close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that you'll move back to Texas eventually? Yes. I know um, when I first buy a house, I want it to be in Texas. Mm -hmm. It's probably the – it's cheap. You'll get a lot more bang for (laughs) your fuck out there than you will here. Oh, my God. Oh, God. So what is it about Texas that you love so much? Like, what draws you back there? Oh, man. I love the people, um, especially in Austin where I'm from. I mean – I don't really go outside of Austin a lot. Um, But, yeah, the people are so nice. Like, everyone's – no one's trying to come up off of each other, Mm -hmm. it seems. Um, And the landscape. I love open land and, Mm -hmm. like, being able to frolic in the the flowers. (laughs) (laughs) 
So you say people aren't trying to come up on you. So you're feeling that very like showbiz kind of fair weather friend I, thing yeah. out here. Like in a way, like I, I feel like I've experienced more judgment here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just don't want to surround myself with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because I was born and grew up in LA mm. and I definitely see that. I see that mm. whole, you know, you, you're talking to someone and they're looking, you know, at a party and they're looking around the room to see if there's someone more important that they could mm -hmm. be talking to you about. And then people are only interested in terms of what you can give them because there's a lot of social climbers here mm -hmm. because they're trying to get into show business and that kind of stuff. So I definitely see a lot of that. But, you know, for me, having grown up here, like I have my family here and I'm really close to my family. Yes. So I have that that home base, which keeps me anchored here. But I feel like if I didn't, I would also struggle with mm -hmm. living in this city. No, for sure. And, you know, I found that, like, people from L.A. Were, are cool. They're cool as fuck. Mm -hmm. And it's always like, <laughs> I don't get it. Because it's like everybody's trying, you know, they're coming here to try to make it. Yeah, true. And I guess if you're from here, it's... Yeah. yeah. And it's hard. It's I think a lot of times you get people from their small home, you know, smaller hometown, mm -hmm. and they were the best-looking person there. They were the best musician, actress, whatever there mm -hmm. and then they think oh and then they come to LA and, yeah, and then you're literally like, yeah. like millions of beautiful talented people yeah. mm -hmm. it's crazy it's funny when I when I'm here in LA and <laughs> I always feel fat and ugly and old <laughs> just because you know it's like we're surrounded by stunning people and then I'll go to another state and I'll be like you know I'm okay looking yeah. like yeah I'm like right. have you ever heard like oh I'm a seven in Texas, but I'm a eight in Detroit or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. That's it's it is absolutely um and I don't see it until I like leave uh, the city, but I'm like, wow, you forget mm -hmm. how people here it's just very unrealistic. I know, yeah. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean yeah, a lot of high standards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so you were stripping before you got into porn. Uh, what made you want to start dancing? Um, oh, wow. I don't know. I mean, since like middle school, I had been like joking, but not really about, oh, I want to be a stripper. Let's, yeah, I go to the club. And then I turned 18, took me like, I was going to do it on my 18th birthday. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I got nervous. And then two days after I finally did it. And what was your first experience like? It was so awesome. Really? Yeah. It, I mean, it was, I loved the people in the club. I loved my club, to be exact. Um, and I felt welcomed there. The, mm -hmm. the girls were nice. It was mm -hmm. great. It's so interesting how people have, like, very different experiences depending mm -hmm. on where they go. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, yeah. And okay. so you went on stage, and did you feel like, like, did you make good money that night? Um, I think I made, it was probably like only $500. Still a lot though but for my, yeah. That's a lot mm -hmm. for a few hours of work. Oh in yeah. One day. I mean, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. After working at IHOP and being a janitor, like, yes. You were a janitor? <laughs> yeah. Really? At a mall. <laughs> at a mall? Yeah. It was so bad. <laughs> oh man. I was, I joined because my friend was working there and he's a Capricorn like me, like, but very... I don't even know. Just no one you've ever met before. Just crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so we worked together, then he got fired. So I was just like, whatever, I'm, I'll, I'll quit too. <laughs> so you, you, once he left, you were like, I'm not doing this janitor mm -hmm. job anymore. Yeah, but it helped that my other two friends worked at the mall too. So we would just be fucking around. <laughs> Have you done like a janitor themed shoot? No. I feel like you should. I should. You should be like a hot janitor, oh like mopping God. the floors with like your tits hanging out. Oh, God, I should. I feel like that would be really good. I think you should tell browsers that, and I should shoot it. Yes, I'm so down. <laughs> okay, I will. I will. Because that's a very unusual. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I've ever met anybody who was a janitor, or at least who was a model who was a janitor. I know. It's such a weird job. Like It is kind of random. Yeah. Ooh, man, it's the first time I smelled ammonia. Nasty as fuck. Yeah, pretty <laughs> bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so how did you transition into shooting porn? Um, how did I transition? COVID. Mm. Yeah, that was the, the main reason of going into porn was 
started with money. Yeah. Because, you know, of course, like I lived alone with my, or I lived with my cousin. And yeah, so, um, and then, yeah, I just ended up loving it. And so I'm assuming that you were dancing. Was mm-hmm. that like your full-time gig? You were a dancer? Yeah. And then COVID happened and obviously the clubs closed down. Mm-hmm. So what was your next step then? Um, well, the person who was scouting me, he told me to get an OnlyFans, but, you know, only during COVID too. And I had no, not as much followers for sure. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I... So then, wait, so did you get scouted? It was your current agent who scouted you? Mm-hmm. Okay, so somebody else. Yeah. And he was like, you should do porn. Mm -hmm. Did he see you at the club? No, he saw me on Twitter. I I must have posted something like, I want to fuck or something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was Mm -hmm. horny shit. And then I guess he found me that way. It was kind of weird. And then what was your reaction? Um, It was, I was, I wanted to do it at first, um, but I was 17. Mm. So a little early to start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I told him my age and he was like, okay, wait till you're 18. And then I started stripping mm-hmm. and then. It, oh, so he reached out to you before you mm-hmm. even started dancing. Okay. Yeah. So like, I just, I was like, I want to try stripping first and then see where it goes. And then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then you did the stripping and you were good with that. Mm-hmm. And then that shut down. And then did you reach back out to the agent now that you like had no work? You're like, okay. Yeah. So what was, like, what were your next steps? Um, well, since it was, like, March, I'm pretty sure, um, all the only shoots I could do were, like, I did FTV. That was my first shoot. And okay. then, like, I didn't really get to work until maybe, like, closer to September. Mm-hmm. And then I shot with Dick Drainers. And then I started doing the porn pros, like, starting in Vegas, mm-hmm. two-week thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know, FTV Girls is a, like, amateur girls website that is really, really good at getting girls, like, very first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, Mm -hmm. they're, and they do good stuff. And they shoot, like, public nudity, or at least Mm -hmm. they make it look like public nudity. Oh, they definitely did public nudity. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Which, to me, like, I'm so terrified of, like, getting caught, like... (laughs) Shooting like new, oh, yeah. like I won't do anything that I feel is like remotely sketchy <laughs> or like not like on a private property. Not even car sex. No, well, I mean, me engaging in it myself, but okay. me shooting oh, it okay. because as the producer, you're liable for everything. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't feel like fucking getting like my shit impounded and mm. and everything. Oh, for sure. Yeah, all that expensive ass equipment. Yeah, mm. yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not fucking around. Yeah. Um. So, so anyways, that's what FTV Girls is. And it's it was solo, right? Um, yes, yeah. And then, so what was the public nudity like? Like, what did you have you do exactly? Um, it was, I mean, we we just like, where did we go? We went to, he he brought his like McLaren. He had, he had some really expensive car. We were driving it to some mini mall and like a park. We went to a fountain. Um everywhere outside and you know it's in Arizona so like in the middle of summer it almost seemed like yeah it was hot as fuck yeah Mm -hmm. but I mean since it was during lockdown there probably wasn't really a lot of people yeah it wasn't it wasn't a lot of people it really wasn't but um it it was definitely in a public place that's for sure were you scared of getting caught um not really I kind of like it Mm -hmm. like the public nudity thing okay Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) Hmm. And then they also want you to do a masturbation video and orgasm for yeah. real, right? Mm-hmm. That's their whole thing. Were you able to do that? Um, yes. Yeah. Cause I like it. I don't know. Like, do they give you toys? Yeah. Yeah. And he gave me this, that, um, you know, the back massage. Oh yes. The, <laughs> um, the Hitachi. Uh huh. Or yeah. yeah. But like harder. Really? Yeah, not the like Theragun. Like the I mean, one that goes bigger, like, but like it's a small one. Yeah, it like hard. You want to do that? Yes. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. Dude, I use that on my legs every night. And like, I'm always like, if I ever put this on my vagina, it would like bang like Taurus into like inside of me. There's mm. like that. I feel like that's like doesn't feel good. I know. I mean, it, it like I put it on a really low level because yeah, it did kind of hurt, but. I don't know. I was brand new, like, and I had not really found my voice yeah. yet, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you you kind of look back on that, and you're like, mm, there's some things I would have maybe 
Oh, for sure. Lo- Change. Uh, honestly, a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. With that shoot in general or just overall? That shoot in general. Okay. What do you think that you would have changed? Um, the makeup, the hair. Um, I like. I just feel like he didn't really give me any real detail on mm-hmm. like what I needed. Mm-hmm. Um, besides like clothes and stuff. And I don't know. He wasn't really telling me what was going on. Like we went to the grocery store and bought like all these foods to, mm-hmm. <laughs> to um, fuck myself with. And I didn't know that corn isn't supposed to go in your pussy. <laughs> and mind you, this fucking corn photo is the photo that everyone found out in porn. And it's like, <laughs> me like what? fucking corned up. <laughs> what? I mean, I feel like that, that feel, no. I mean, cause like the ends are not comfortable. Yeah. I mean, I, I had him cut the, Okay. The part. Uh huh. But did like was it? Wait, was it cooked or was it raw? Uh, raw. Okay. So yeah. the kernels are less likely to come off inside. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. That would have been terrible. Yeah, I'm just like thinking oh of all of the ways that this could have gone like terribly wrong. <laughs> oh what? Oh, I'm glad he didn't cook it. That would have been. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's you know I don't know what that's about I mean there's I'm sure there's a food fetish thing that people are into and it is like kind of a little bit ridiculous Mm. and there's a bit of a shock value there so maybe that's because you said that that porn photo was what how everyone found out you did porn probably Mm. because that circulated because it's like why is this girl (laughs) sitting in a corn of her fucking vagina (laughs) I mean that would be my question oh god I know literally yeah Fucking crazy. So what happened? Okay, so tell me about like when, like who did you hear from that first found out you did porn? Like how did that all go down? Oh my God. Oh shit. I mean, it was definitely someone from my high school. And um, I was like kind of the school slut. Mm -hmm. So they didn't really like me. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, they were just clowning my shit. But I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Still getting money though. <laughs> Y'all are broke asking for your parents' money. It's fine. <laughs> I would say, like, you know, sexually liberated female. Mm-hmm. And now you're using your talents for exactly. you know a successful career. So Hell like yeah. it worked. It sounds like it worked out great for you. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, I'm happy and that's all that matters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then tell me about your first actual like scene scene. Like, was it boy girl or girl girl? Mm-hmm. Um it was it was a boy girl, actually. Um, it was the guy with FTV girls. Okay. Yeah. Um, was it like a POV thing? Yeah. yeah okay. I think. I know it had POV in it, I mm-hmm. think. But he, yeah. It was, yeah. It was, it was well, okay. He told me that he had a website for it. And no, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't? Yeah. So it's not on the web? Nope. I have never, never been able to find it. Weird. I know. But Do you think I that think maybe like agent... the footage got damaged or something? I don't know. Because I feel because... like, I mean, okay. So that's weird to me because if you're one of like those guys who gets off on, you just want to fuck hot chicks. So mm-hmm. you like pretend that you're like a, you know, a professional and you get them and you shoot a scene and you film it and you mm-hmm. keep it for yourself. Like, okay. But he already has a very successful website, Solo Girl website. So, like, why wouldn't... I mean, he has Angel Young's first boy girl. I feel like Mm -hmm. that's valuable. Yeah, right. Why wouldn't you want to put that out? Yeah, I don't know. And Um, make money on that. I... Fuck, man. I don't even know. So, what was your first scene that your fans can actually go find? Yes, that was my dick drainer scene. Okay. Um, Yeah, my favorite porn star in the world. Who who is the guy? Um, he's in Florida. Okay. Um, his name is Brandon Richards. Okay, but like he he's the guy. I don't know if you've seen him. Um, he wears a face mask and he's a black guy with a big dick and he does really rough sex with rim jobs and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and I'll show you after. But yeah, you like that one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. Oh, I love him. So is that maybe when you felt like, okay, this is something that I can do? Mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely. And then how did you end up getting your browser's contract? Um, I 
I'm pretty sure it all started with the down to fuck shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, And I guess. Is that who who does that? Um, that was that was Ricky Johnson. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and that was like the one in the house in Temecula where we, um, it was like a group of of eight mm-hmm. people. Um, yeah, and I guess that's how Lulu and Kylie and Alexis got contracted too. Okay, so does is that for Brazzers? Because I know Ricky's mm-hmm. a Brazzers contract star. Oh, um, or is it for his own stuff? That was for Reality Kings. Okay, mm-hmm. so which is. Part of Mind Geek who owns browsers. Okay, mm. so it's part of that family, the Mind Geek family. Yeah. Okay, yes. gotcha, gotcha, and gotcha. And then started with the Reality Kings contract and then. Right. <laughs> Look at you. So <laughs> I feel so weird talking about it because it's like, uh, you Why? know. I don't know. Like, it, it almost makes me, like, not uncomfortable, but because, like, I'm proud of myself, mm-hmm. but it just feels. I don't know. It feels weird talking about my, myself and my, like, accomplishments for some reason. I get that. Yeah. I get that. You'll get used to it. Yeah, I yeah. feel like you're going to have a lot more accomplishments, and you're going to have to talk about them. You're just going to have to get comfortable with telling the world how awesome you are. Fine. So. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is your favorite scene that you've done so far? Um... It can be more than one if you're having a hard time deciding. Okay. And okay. you don't have to mention the scene that you shot with me because, you know, I don't want to put you in that position. <laughs> Just take that off the table. <laughs> I mean, I did love that shoot for sure. And um, I, I really liked the one that Stella Smut um, shot for me and Aria. Yeah, for Twisties, if the bra fits. Mm, yes. That I scene, I had a meeting with Twisties um, a couple weeks ago, and they said that that scene did really well. Really? Yay. Yeah. Oh, really well. Like, yeah. that was one of their best performing scenes they've had in a while. Oh, my God. Ah. <laughs> Fuck, man. I wish we could get awards for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Um, but what else? Um, I do have this... Oh, I, I, this is a content scene I did um, with Lot Lizard, or it was Disciples of Desire, but they, that's like the brand. The, the brand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that was really fun. It was with, well, never mind. Okay, you don't have to name names <laughs> yeah. if you don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was, um, it was, it was a really great scene. Good, um, good, it was, it was, it was a uh, shot well. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, that was what, a boy girl? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you said it was content trade, so it's also, like, on your OnlyFans? Yes, on my OnlyFans, and I posted, like, half of it free on my Pornhub, oh, if cool. anyone wants to check it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are your favorite kinds of scenes to do? Um, oh, Gonzo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah? Not much of an actor. Um, and, yeah, I just like to fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, boy girl or girl girl or threesomes. Oh, that's what, oh, that's what you're asking. No, me. I mean oh, all okay. of those does um, all of those questions apply? I feel like uh, I mean, I haven't shot a DP, but I feel like if I did, that would be my favorite. So why have you not done that yet? Are you like waiting for the right opportunity? Um, yes, and I also don't really know because I, I know I've talked to my agent about it and it would just never really comes up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would like to talk to someone about that for mm. sure. Maybe like a showcase though. That'd be cool. Like, yeah. yeah. So if you do it, you want to make sure that it's, you build like a lot of publicity. You don't just like shoot yeah. a DP and it's like, here's my DP. It's like you make it into mm-hmm. a big deal. Yeah. Like I want to be nominated for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we will come right back. With all the bad news about prices these days, it's nice to know that Adam and Eve is still offering the best deal out there. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. It's got toys, games, movies, and so much more. Whether you're single and looking to impress a new partner, or you're in a relationship and you need to spice up your sex life, Adam and Eve has what you need. They've been at the top of the adult retail chain for decades, and there's a reason for that. Now my listeners will get 50% off of any one item, and that's not all. You also get three bonus sexy items and six movies for free, plus free shipping. 
No matter what you choose from the privacy of your own home, you can rest assured that it will be shipped to you in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com, select any one item at 50% off, plus enjoy three sexy gifts and free shipping with the code HOLLY. That's adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY. You have to use my code in order to get this special deal. All right, guys, we are back. So is there anything about working in the porn industry that surprised you? Like that you didn't expect? Um, oh my gosh, not really. I mean, I kind of came in with like open arms to mm-hmm. feel it out. Um, I think a negative thing that surprised me was how many people are not very good people. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's not, it's the majority is good. Mm-hmm. I've a hundred percent found, but some people just are just sick in the head sometimes mm-hmm. like uh, some of the guys mm. yeah some of like the male performers mm. so you've had issues with some of them yeah do you date um in the industry or outside the industry or how's like dating for you um i i would i mean i'm open to it um i've heard good stories and bad stories so you mm. know i'm i'm just gonna like have my boundaries in order and see what's up yeah but i would date outside or inside right what is the like what are you looking for in a partner um confidence I love respect um and oh I just I just said this um to someone oh oh I'm I'm not gonna look but dang uh just like to have good um Like, I want to be listened to, an open Mm -hmm. listener and, like, um, someone that's open-minded and is open to being fun and also, I mean, but, you know, how they are is fine. Yeah, it's fine, but, like, open listener for sure and being open to doing other things. Right. So, like, and good communication. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's so key. That's hard, too. No, for sure. You know, like, (laughs) being a communicating part. Like, that's, I struggle with that with my husband. I mean, I don't struggle with it, like, I feel like I'm so much better at it with him now, but especially mm. since we got together when I was older. Um, but communication is like, I think one of the hardest things. Yeah. It's hard it really to tell is. people like what you want. Mm-hmm. And then do you feel, cause I feel like I do this and I know that um, people say that like, I feel it's true though, that mm. women, we tend to not say what's bothering us and we expect you to know what it is. <laughs> I mean, that is 100% true. I, do, I mean, I do all the time. I'm like, but, you should, like, I'm just going to be quiet. I'm going to give you dirty looks and I'm going to give you the cold shoulder and you should know why. <laughs> and if you don't know why, that I'm even angrier at you. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they should, like, because, I mean, I get it. We should be telling people what's wrong. But if we're, I mean, some people are just clueless, I think. Like, I'm openly treating you like shit because I'm pissed at you. Mm-hmm. Why don't you get it? Why are you? But so, but so many men will will respond with, "I, I don't know. I didn't know. Mm. I didn't realize. Like you have to tell me." But that I get it. I mean, yeah, yeah, I do the same thing. Mm-hmm. But I've, I feel like I've gotten better at it. I was proud of myself. I we had a my husband and I almost never fight, but we did oh, have good. like a little bit of an argument. Like this a while ago, mm. and I was like. I just laid it out. I'm like, this is why I'm upset with you. This, I'm not okay with this, this, this. And I was, and he was just like, okay. Yeah. You know, it's good. Yeah. yeah. But it was like, it took me 44 years to get there. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold am I? Hold am I? I'm 43 or I'm 44. (laughs) I'm turning, I'm turning something in two weeks. Oh my gosh. I think I'm turning 44. (laughs) One day, Angel, you will get to my age and you will also forget how old you are. Oh, Lord. I remember being your age and being like, how could someone forget how old they are? And now I'm that person. But anyways, it took me a long time to figure that shit out. Yeah, because we live a long time. Shit. Yeah, hopefully. Mm -hmm. If we're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, So who are some of your favorite performers that you've worked with? Um... mm. I love Tommy King. 
Um, who we shot, we did, yeah, yes, for uh, your Twisty Treat of the Month scene. Yes. Um, yeah, she's, are there, uh, she's a great butt. Yes, mm. immaculate. Yeah. Her lips. Oh, but, um, uh, who else? I mean, yeah, dig drainers. And I mean, I haven't really had a bad, like, time on set Mm -hmm. i thought everyone's been pretty cool Mm -hmm. um yeah oh phoenix love shooting with phoenix and sheree deville oh yeah amazing performers they are pros they've also been at this a long time Mm -hmm. so yeah 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 sheree's she's so cool is there anyone on your bucket list that you haven't shot with yet that you're dying to Mm. Oh, Demi Sutra, Anna Fox. Um, I wish Jason Love was in the industry. Yeah, he was a good looking man. I shot, um, I shot some like pictures of him for many vids. That's the only time I ever worked mm. with him. Just some like sexy guy photos. Oh, he was, he yeah. was lovely. Oh, he was? Yeah, oh. he was really nice. Oh. He was a gentleman. <laughs> Big dick and nice. <laughs> 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 is like big dick important to you like i mean i know in porn like you know it's mm. kind of like you have to have a minimum size yeah um but in your personal life how important is it to you um it's not too important as long as you know how to use it but i do love thick dick mm-hmm. yeah, if thick, i had to choose if you had to choose mm-hmm. thick dick as opposed to like you'd prefer to be on the thicker side than on the longer side mm. yeah yeah long just pain Mm -hmm. especially if they don't know how to use it and majority they don't yeah Mm -hmm. and what would constitute knowing how to use it just being able to read your body language and see how you're reacting yes yeah exactly i mean i guess it depends for like long dick guys and like small dick guys um because you know like with small dick guys you just gotta it's the motion you know Mm -hmm. and then the the big dick guys they just, ha- yeah, know the body language. Like, if you see that I'm wincing in pain, don't. <laughs> yeah, don't go Inch out of it. Yeah. 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 Mm. Let's talk about the Twisty Tree of the Month shoot. Okay. Because I was there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great shoot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I will say that, so that was also another shoot where I felt like you really rose you up in my esteem because, We were shooting in like a hundred year old building in downtown LA. It was a fucking heat wave. There was no air conditioning. It was so hot. (laughs) In a warehouse. like (laughs) In a warehouse, no like air. Um, You were in these ridiculous platform fucking like pleather ankle boots. Oh man. Oh yeah. Because originally we were going to put you in the knee high ones. And then I think Mm. we put you in your, your own ankle ones right oh, yeah those oh yeah yeah the platform. Mm-hmm. and then a leather jacket mm-hmm. and also we pumped like a fuck ton of fucking fog oh. into the room so like you could barely see and i feel like it also made the room kind of hotter in a way mm-hmm. oh for sure yeah and we wet the floor down mm-hmm. and then we're like okay like <laughs> dance and look sexy even though you're like dying yeah and hold the guitar and yeah and uh, heavy guitar yeah. yeah dance around with a heavy guitar your only piece of furniture is this tiny fucking amp which is like really close to the floor <laughs> and i think i got lightheaded at some point right you did we yeah. had to stop for a second and like we thought you were gonna pass out oh my god yeah <laughs> oh man yeah i don't know why i do that no, but I mean, you were, I mean, you didn't complain. You really powered through. Like, what goes through your head in situations like that? Do you just feel like this is, I got to get this shoot done? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, my mom taught me to be professional. Um, she taught me how to get a job. She taught me how to keep a job. So I got to intense. But it's it's so weird because in this, but in this industry, it's like, it's so not that. I mean, the I hear all the time girls are late. They're like rude. Mm-hmm. I just I don't know. I wonder if it was because you said you had a bunch of like regular jobs before you mm-hmm. got into the industry. I had I remember I had a conversation with Lena Lopez about this, and we were both saying that we found that people who've had regular nine to fives that they had to kind of keep a schedule with are actually a little bit better mm-hmm. at 
like working when they come into this industry because they have a background and like, okay, I need to be there on time. Like they have a mm-hmm. sense of professionalism. Yeah. I think sometimes when you just come from like fucking high school and yeah. then you turn 18 <laughs> and then you just like, or you cam and then, you know, you're used to being on your own time and you're not used to mm-hmm. having to work with other people's schedules that you're a little bit like looser about. Yeah. But I mean, it's still a job. Like, no, I believe me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure for y'all, I mean, it's, ugh, I could not. I've had girls show up over two hours late and like not even acknowledge that they're late and just be like, here I am. Like, be grateful that I showed up. And I'm like, like, girl, you're getting paid. Like, yeah. ugh. And the thing is, is that I can't yell at you because yeah. I can't set this negative tone for the day. Like mm-hmm. I need you yeah, to be then they're like, oh, I'm done. I'm walking off set. Yeah. Like, I need you yeah. to be a beat. I need you to be like, mm-hmm. you know, like I can't have the scene ruined because I wanted to tell you that it mm-hmm. really sucks for you not to be on time, but I just generally don't hire them again. It's kind of how I handle it. Good. Yeah. That's, that's smart. Yeah. Cause it's just, it's definitely weird. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you find that weird because that means you're <laughs> professional and you show up on time. Oh, yeah. Um, what advice would you give to new performers? Is there anything that, like, you know now that you wish you had known when you first started? Um, probably to be uh, – to have a good attitude, um, to – take everything people say with a grain of salt. Um, I think that applies with every, any industry or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and keep your circle small. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and ask the, the more experienced girls for questions like vaginal health or what, what not. Yeah. Was there anyone in particular that really helped you out when you first started that gave you advice or that you looked up to? Mm. Oh, there's this, there was this girl, um, Crystal Taylor. Mm-hmm. She was super cool, yeah. But she's fairly new. Um, and then recently I met Phoenix, and she's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know Phoenix has – there's a lot of experience behind that girl. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any big goals that you want to accomplish in the industry? Oh, my gosh. Yes. My oh, AVN awards and um, I don't know. I, I want to get to like I love that Angela has her website and I would love to get something kind of like that to, you know, with me shooting still. Um, it's about Angela White. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, Angela White. Um, yeah, but that's, uh, I mean, just to grow, to keep growing, to keep like – getting better at what I'm doing and you want to kind of establish a brand because mm-hmm. Angela White's definitely established a brand. Oh, definitely. Like she yeah. goes into everything with a very business mm-hmm. sense about it. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Hell yeah. She's definitely a, a good teacher to have. Have you done a scene with her? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. Um, I did two. Yeah. I bet that was fucking killer. Mm-hmm. Two in like your big natural boobs. Oh yeah. That She's a amazing. freaky freak. <laughs> oh my God. She was in there. We, that one, this one hasn't um, posted yet. Only one has, but she, <laughs> she was that thing with the fucking oil and just like squirting in her mouth and <laughs> blowing it out. She definitely like goes the f- yeah. The whole, the full Monty. Yeah. Like she goes all the way. She's, she, I mean, when she commits to something, she really, mm. she doesn't do anything half-assed. Yeah. Which is really admirable. I love that. Hell yeah, for sure. Yeah. So do you ever get recognized in public now that you're in porn? Um, I have gotten recognized probably only like two times. Okay. And how mm. was that? It was cool. Um, the second time I was a little drunk, so, mm. and the guys were acting kind of weird. Mm-hmm. so it was like um, yeah but the first thing was cool yeah mm-hmm. so if a fan sees you in public can he approach you and like what's the best way to do it yes I would love to be approached um just be like hi are you Angel Young's and then you know have a little conversation don't touch me um unless I say you can but um yeah I can take pictures with you anything <laughs> you've signed it at conventions right yes at you- the Chicago Expo yeah yeah um, have you ever had like situations with fans where you feel like 
they're a little grabby or have you mostly mm-hmm. had good experiences there? Cause I just, I know some girls, some girls are very okay with people grabbing them like wherever, if they're mm-hmm. signing at an expo and then other girls are like, you know, you shouldn't do that without asking. What was your experience yeah. like? Um, I thought it was cool. Um, I feel like the only time people really grope me inappropriately is when I strip. Mm-hmm. But isn't that illegal? Like, well, I mean, like illegal for the club, right? Mm-hmm. You get like kicked out for that, right? Yep. And mm-hmm. I mean, the managers are kind of like, eh, if you, they didn't rape you, it's like, <laughs> I'm like, wow. Wow, it has to go that far. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Like, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I felt like the porn fans are pretty respectful for the most part. Mm hmm. Um, and you and OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. So you connect with your fans directly. Yes. Yeah. And how have, how has that been for you? Like, do you still, because I know you've only been in the industry for about two years. Does it still ever, like, trip you out that you have these people that follow you and that really? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Hell, yeah. Um, it's, it, 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 like, it can get stressful at times because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like the you just get more and more and more the more you get in the industry and then it's like yeah, but it's it's not terrible. Um I I I like it. I like talking to my fans and I like getting their requests and all that. So yeah, I think it's So you do customs? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Have you ever done had like a really weird crazy custom request? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh god. Before I even like went out um into Vegas for my first time to shoot, mm-hmm. um this guy, he asked me um to shit in a like a container mm-hmm. and ship it to him. And I almost did it, but I then I realized that maybe I would get in big trouble for that if they caught it or something. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Does that count as hazardous waste? I feel like so. Because I do think that there are restrictions of what you can ship. I mean, obviously you can't sell, you can't ship like illegal drugs and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I mean, even alcohol, like the person has to be over the age of 18 and sign for it. Like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like poop falls under like hazardous waste material. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because that, the uh, maybe a year ago, this girl, Bella Delphine. Yeah. Yeah, with the. Bath water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, so the uh, only reason was the postage, but otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I was about to. Shit. <laughs> man. So uh, what did you, were you just like, sorry, man, I can't. Yeah. Like, postage. Mm-hmm. You can come like receive it from me in person, maybe at a convention. You can just like bring in a little like ice bag and just like. Put it like <laughs> oh God. Oh yeah. Just, it's just for a fan. <laughs> Smoke like shit. <laughs> I had a guy that used to email me and he would follow up every year to see if I'd changed my mind um, because he wanted to eat my poop. And the way the, it was the best part was that it was this really eloquently crafted letter, you know, and it was very well written. And, you know, he said that uh, he really uh, wanted to taste my toilet treats. Um, toilet treats. Toilet treats. He also called it scat caviar. Oh my God. And so he wanted me to go to, he would rent a hotel room. He would not be there. I would go to the hotel room. I would get the key from the front desk, go to the hotel room. I would poop in, I guess not in the toilet. Cause you probably don't want to water your shit down. Right. You yeah. want to like k- keep it solid. <laughs> a poop in a bucket or something. And then I would leave and then he would come in and he would, and he described the whole dining experience. He would get like a silver tray and he would have like a chalice where maybe I could pee into. And then he would drink like my golden champagne, I think he called it. And he would enjoy <laughs> my scat caviar. And I was just like, oh my God. wow, you really, you really like have a whole thing around yeah. this. So, and I was like, you know, I'm not going to kink shame you, but no. <laughs> I'm sorry. And he's like, and he offered me money and I was like, I'm sorry. And then he offered me more and I was like, no. Uh And then like, yeah, like about once a year, I haven't heard from him in a long time, but about once a year he would write to me and he'd be like, just checking to see if you changed your mind. And I was like, dead sets. 
Wow. That is so interesting. <laughs> but if someone gave you that, like, scenario where you didn't have to ship it, you went into a room, and then you, like, left, would you do it then, you think? Probably if I... If someone was with me. I was like, going to say, you have to bring a chaperone because yeah. who knows, maybe he's in the fucking room, like hiding behind the curtain. Literally. Right? Uh, yeah. You should bring a really burly dude and then make him poop into the bowl. So it's not even yes. your poop. Oh my God. That's such a good idea. <laughs> Uh, I feel like if someone's going to eat your poop, they're, they're going to, you know, they should get the real thing. mm -hmm. They're going to pay for it. Yeah, exactly. I'm honestly not entirely sure that he even really wanted to eat my poop. I think the fantasy was around the idea Mm -hmm. and like soliciting me for the poop. Sometimes guys, when they have crazy customs, they don't necessarily want the thing. They just want to like fantasize about it and talk to you about it. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. So. Wow, just like the fact that I can imagine just like a silver platter mm-hmm. with like a plate of poop <laughs> and like a little like a little teaspoon, maybe like a little parsley garnish on top of it. Teacup. Yep, a little teacup. <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, you can make it into a whole thing. Yeah, for sure. He <laughs> has a tux on. Whining and dining. <laughs> uh, and on that note. <laughs> Angel, thank you so much for coming in today. Yes. It was so amazing. I love having conversations with you. Oh, thank you. Well, hopefully there'll be many more. Yes. Um, can you tell everyone where they can find you on social media, On plug all your plugs, your websites, your OnlyFans, all that stuff? Okay, cool. Um, my Instagram is youngbiff from heaven. It's spelled B-I-H. Um, my TikTok is young ho from heaven. My Twitter is Angel Young's XXX, just like my OnlyFans is also Angel Young's XXX. And my mini vids is The Angel Young's. <sighs> it's a lot of handles. It is. I know. I wish I could just have a poster board. Here you go. You could also get like one of those link trees websites. And oh, then you just yeah. put all your links on there. Yeah, and then I you have to send people to that. Mm, I wonder if, I, oh, I wonder if I can put that on like a card. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Also, too, because so often sex workers get kicked off of Instagram and off of TikTok, Mm. you could change the links. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If you get kicked off and then that Instagram no longer works, Mm -hmm. if people went to that link tree, then they would see your current Instagram link and then they would be able to find you. Yeah. That's my biggest problem is when I go to, like, try to tag people when they were on my show, Mm -hmm. their account was there. And then once the episode comes out, the account's gone. Oh, no. Yeah. Dang, yeah. Because I literally just, I made like maybe 500 cards Mm -hmm. of, and it has my old Instagram Mm -hmm. and my OnlyFans, but Mm -hmm. I should have just put the link tree. That would be easier. Yeah. (sighs) Got to put together like a little press kit. Yeah. Need some headshots. Oh, we got to get your headshot, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. All right, we're going to wrap up this interview. Um, And you guys, of course, can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. If you want to support this podcast and watch these live streams, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and I'll see you next week. Bye.